So impressively at Old Trafford are unavailable tonight, but Paul Gascoigne and Paul Stewart, both suspended then, have come back into the mix. There is a place for Paul Allen, who was left out of the last two league games. 21-year-old John Polston deputises for Steve Sedgley in the centre of defence. And he'll have to keep a sharp eye on Ian Muir, the Lineker of the lower divisions. More than 100 goals for Tranmere in a career which started by an odd coincidence at Queen's Park Rangers, where he was released by Terry Venables. Tranmere have been hit by a virus which has affected goalkeeper Eric Nixon and their longest-serving player, Steve Mungall. Both are included in this lineup, along with Martin Pike, who's on loan from Sheffield United. Tottenham's last visit here was in the FA Cup in 1953. They drew 1-1 the Tranmere goal from Lloyd Eiston, who was presented to the crowd just before the teams came out. The replay, well, Tranmere lost 9-1. Still their worst ever defeat. Leicester Shapter from Torquay presides over this classic cup tie confrontation. Club officials here have been describing this as the most momentous night in the history of this homely club. The pitch has pleasantly surprised Spurs, who saw a video of a recent game on this ground when part of the pitch was very muddy indeed. It's dried out. They put some new drainage in in the last few days. And Tranmere are a side that like to pass the ball. But they've got to earn the right to pass it. That's what the manager, John King, has been saying. Here's Mark Hughes. Spurs, of course, faced the player of the same name in the third round against Manchester United. They solved that particular problem. But here come Tranmere with Ian Muir. Their record at home is very impressive. They've not lost here in any competition since January. Lineker. Mitchell Thomas trying to deliver an early pass into an area where there was no teammate making a run. Muir. Well, he's prepared to shoot from anywhere, really. He's a great operator in and around the opposing penalty area. He needs three, incidentally, to break the all-time club record here. Stewart pulling left. He's played here. Plenty of times before in his days with Blackpool. Vickers back pedalling. And Stewart trying to make room for a shot. And in goal for Tranmere, Stewart's old Manchester City teammate, Eric Nixon. It was always a shot that seemed uppermost in Stewart's mind. Nixon saw it coming and dropped down well. Oversteal this time. John Morrissey hoped to get a free kick then, but Leicester Shapter didn't oblige. They've had some terrible times at Tranmere. A couple of years ago, it looked as though they would drop out of the league. It just shows how you can recover the democracy of the football world but it's Spurs who are looking with Allen here oh and Nixon with what could be a very significant save Paul Allen almost had too much time and he looked Nixon in the eyes but the goalkeeper read the mind of the Tottenham midfield man and the save was of high caliber. Bishop. Eddie Bishop, who got the winner against Millwall. A tough character in midfield. But Tranmere thought they were going a goal down here. All that is except their goalkeeper, who denied Paul Allen.
Bergson. Bishop. Hughes, the free man at the back. Off goes Muir, hoping to fasten on to a flick from Steele. Harvey. Morrissey, immediately two Tottenham players try to close him down. Thomas and Samways. And Morrissey can't get past them. Mitchell Thomas, who has been playing more recently in midfield, but he was bought as a left back. Hughes, Steele was calling for it. He jumps here with Mabbott and guides it down brilliantly for Muir. It was a great effort to... Samways play on, says Leicester Schachter. Samways again. Here's Lineker. Top quality. Tottenham giving Gary Lineker really his first half chance. It was no more than that. Harvey. Bishop again. Mungle. Harvey. Well, it was a little lax. And now Thomas, who's not the favourite of the local supporters after that earlier incident with Steele. Gascoigne, Higgins wasn't sure whether to come and challenge him. Gascoigne's passed him, and Tottenham has scored. A classy goal from the first division side. And Gascoigne, who has been in the headlines for the wrong reason, over the past couple of the days, we'll get the right sort of publicity for this. It was delightfully executed. The goal coming after 31 minutes. And Gascoigne really deceived Higgins there, who couldn't get there in time, nor could Nixon. Tranmere behind. But they fought back from behind against Millwall, so they won't be downhearted. Well, sometimes the childlike appeal of Paul Gascoigne's personality, he is a very engaging character. At times he lapses into childish behaviour, but he can play. Still! That was an opportunity to hit back straight away from this tower of strength for Tranmere in attack. Jim Steele. But Spurs in control at the moment. And they've certainly earned the right to have that control by matching Tranmere's work rate. Stewart, that's a terrific pass for Allen. Samways has the chance, it's a goal. Or is it? Referee Lester Schachter saw that the flag was up and Samways has now just realised that. Stewart and then Allen involved in the build-up. And it was David Howes who stayed in there. The ball actually deflecting in at the end of Bishop. Harvey. Had a minute and a half of time added on. When you think that Tranmere haven't lost here for 10 months, a run of 24 games, that's a credit on Tottenham and Paul Gascoigne, their scorer in particular. No easy tie this one, but they've <laughs> performed in a way that's given them that sort of relaxed vein. They played well defensively and they've got the one goal at half-time at Prenton Park. It's Tranmere Rovers nil, Tottenham Hotspur one. Tottenham will be pleased the way the first half went, but they will know that they must sustain their effort.
against this most competitive of third division clubs, Tranmere Rovers. Not only beat Millwall this season of the first division, but Middlesbrough, who are a first division club, went out here last season in this competition. Allen taking them all on. It's a great run by Paul Allen, and Nixon had to be called upon, and he wouldn't have thought that would have been necessary when Allen set off way on the far side. And with Tranmere's marking system, very much man for man, no one moved out to stop Allen until the goalkeeper did. Stewart. Samways. Hustled by uh, Harvey. Thomas and uh, his detractors in the crowd. Pleased to see that error. Really caused by uh, collective pressure. Morrissey. Pushed by Thomas. Mungall has taken the free kick quickly. Steel, Harvey for Bishop. The flag has stayed down, and Vickers has equalised. Steve Vickers. It's ticker tape at Tranmere, and it came from the free kick against Thomas. Tranmere didn't just hump the ball into a congested penalty area; they played their way forward. And one of the markers from the back, Steve Vickers, got in unattended and onside and finished with great aplomb. Six minutes into the second half, it's 1-1. And the Tranmere show, is it on the road again? Gascoigne. Samways, without detracting from the home side, it's a little hard on Tottenham, who for the most part have had the measure of their third division opponents. Tottenham were holding a square back line, and well, there might have been a player just out of our picture then, possibly Mitchell Thomas, but the linesman saw nothing wrong. The goal is a good one. That's going again. Still so elusive. Harvey tripped him. Well, he didn't. <laughs> it looked that way. But Leicester Chapter, a lot closer to it than I am, construed that as a dive, and Gaza didn't complain. Terry Venable is just uh, making a gesture or two on the bench as if to say to his players, you've got to quicken the pace of your game. Tranmere at the more alert side at the moment. Thomas in difficulties. This is Pike. Now Harvey. Hughes can still reach it. He might do. He has done. It's a fantastic goal from Jim Steele. Tranmere Rovers are turning it round in the second half at Brenton Park. And Mark Hughes, who thought possibly about shooting, delivered a superb cross. Steele got there first. Torsvet was well beaten. A goal to grace any cup tie from any team from any division. And it's the third division side who lead Tottenham by two goals to one. And Jim Steele, I watched him train yesterday and he was complaining he didn't get any crosses to practice his head work. Well, he didn't need the practice, did he? Alan Lineker. 
Well, Gary Lineker once put a hat-trick past Eric Nixon when Lineker was with Everton and Nixon was with Manchester City. The finishing that night was a little crisper. But that's what it's like when you're behind in a cup tie that you're expected not to lose. It even gets to the great players. Thomas, Tottenham swarming forward again. Mongol, weakened by the virus that he's been suffering with, but strong in character. We're halfway through the second half. Gascoigne teasing, tormenting Samways, and it's gone in whether. Lineker got a touch right in there. He's getting the congratulations. It's 2 2. Well, the Tottenham supporters were going through agonies, but Gascoigne was the architect once more. Samways drilled it hard and low, and it might well have been an own goal off Higgins. Well, Dave Higgins got the final touch from the ball in from Vinnie Samways. And some of the Tranmere joy has evaporated. Higgins. Hughes. Mabbott beating Steele that time, but it drops for Pike. And that looked a pretty useful attempt. It hit Gary Stevens, who recovered well. Steele. Beautifully laid off for Harvey. It's Bishop. Oh, my word, that was a very good chance. And the player who won the tie against Millwall was in a position to do likewise against Tottenham. Picked out perfectly here by Jimmy Harvey. But it was straight at the goalkeeper. Three minutes left, plus stoppage time. Walsh. Now Howells. How tired a Tranmere. Not that time. Especially Hughes bundled down by Howells. Well, the final whistle can't come quickly enough for Terry Venables. Well, there's not a lot of angle on this for Hughes. But it just goes straight downfield towards Steele, who met it, Harvey. Here's Muir, can he do it this time? They thought he might have done. But it was very tight in there. Even for a marksman of Muir's calibre. But it was cleverly set up for him by the two headers from Steele and then from Harvey. Never just set for the shot. Walsh. That is the final whistle. The giant has survived, but only just. It was an own goal from Dave Higgins that pulled it back to 2-2 after Tranmere had struck spectacularly in the second half through Vickers and from Jim Steele. In the replay 36 years ago in the FA Cup, remember that Tranmere tumbled to their record defeat 9-1. I'm sure that won't happen next week at White Hart Lane. It's been a terrific night for Tranmere Rovers.